I'm sure that the morning ritual of many of you watching involves waking up with a cup of a nice hot coffee. I'm Professor Marlies Peters and I have a playlist in science of where I explain some what might seem complicated scientific concepts. So in the previous video I talked about the science of coffee and what the role of caffeine is in coffee. However, in this video I'd like to talk about something else. So what if you still have the coffee with all the flavour and the aroma, but if it's decaf, so it means that the caffeine is extracted from it. So in this short video I'm going to discuss about three of the different methods that we have to produce this and talk about is this really decaf coffee, is this really caffeine free? And what about the flavour, how might this be impacted in this production process? So let's first talk about the different methods that we have available. So in order to produce decaf coffee, we need to remove caffeine, and you can see the chemical structure of this compound here, from the green beans. So the green beans are the beans before they are roasted. However, we want to extract the caffeine, but we want to make sure to retain all the flavour and the aroma so the taste is not impacted. And actually this decaf coffee has been around for a lot longer than you might have thought and I thought. Um, so actually this dates back to what they say that Goethe created in 1819, why he was getting these night jet jitters when he was having his cup of coffee. So people were already aware that caffeine had some kind of impact on them. And that's why actually if you look back in history, you can find the first decaffeination patent in 1905. So more and more than a century ago. So how we can extract this caffeine has all got to do with the difference of the solubility of the caffeine within the beans versus the other compounds that are present. And there are three uh, common methods to do this. Uh, so we can use some chemical solvents, we can use supercritical liquid carbon dioxide, and we can use water with special filters. So out of these three different methods, the chemical solvent method is by far the cheapest option. But let's have a look at what they all entail. Now, if we use solvent-based extraction, we can do this directly or we can do it indirectly. And what you will have to do, and you can see this nicely in this graphic, you first have to steam the coffee beans. So the solvents that we can use are typically dichloromethane or ethyl acetate. Now, what it means is that the caffeine has a higher solubility in these two solvents compared to the water. So we use the steam to release the caffeine and then you will see preferentially the caffeine will go into these solvents that we're using. So these solvents actually bind the caffeine itself. So what we can then do is we can remove these solvents and for instance these solvents have a much lower boiling point than water so we could just simply just evaporate them off. Now this process can be repeated a couple of different times until we are sure that most of the caffeine has been extracted. However, the solvents that are used in this process are quite hazardous to us. So the FDA has very strict guidelines on what's tolerated there. So it means that we need to have a final steaming step or multiple steps in order to remove the solvents and then we get beans that are decaffeinated. There's also an indirect method. So here the beans are soaked in warm water but these beans are not directly brought into contact with the solvents. So then you have the hot water into which you have the caffeine which is then brought into contact with the solvents. So again dichloromethane or ethyl acetate and the caffeine that's bound to the solvent will evaporate. And this is again because I said these, these solvents have a lower boiling point than water. So you can imagine the differences here, and this is indirect, so it is more cumbersome. However, the advantage here is because the beans are not in direct contact with the solvents, um, that you're not having to worry about these trace solvents that might be present in your final product. There are a couple of other different methods, and I mentioned that the first method in solvent is the most cost effective, but the water method, or which we also call Swiss water process, is also gaining in popularity. We can use liquid carbon dioxide in a pressurized stranger. So again, here you get preferential binding of the caffeine, and you can then remove it via high pressure. So all you it's remain behind is your decaf beans. However, you can imagine here you're working under very challenging operation conditions, extremely high pressures, which means that you're dealing with a process which is very costly. So this is why this is not commonly employed. And the method after this, as I said, the water method, this again is something that's relatively more popular. The water method, or also the Swiss water process, is also relatively popular. So we can take here the green coffee beans, so again the greens before they are roasted, and soak them into hot water, which should release the caffeine. So then you get a mixture which is very rich in caffeine, but also in these aromatic compounds that give coffee the really good flavour. 
What we can then do, this green coffee extract that is rich in this caffeine and aroma, is passed through different charcoal filters that can trap the caffeine in a repetitive process. So this process is repeated multiple times until we have extracted sufficient caffeine from the beans. And this caffeine-free extract can then be used to soak a new batch of green coffee beans. A lot of people really wonder, like, is this process, do we really get coffee which is fully caffeine-free? And how does it impact on the flavour? Well, the first thing to debunk is that it's unlikely that this coffee is really fully caffeine-free. So even though we know that caffeine is a much higher solubility in, for instance, DCM than in water, if we look at the solvent-based process, there's always an equilibrium there. So you never get rid of everything that's left behind in the water. However, we know that only around 10% of the original content of caffeine of a cup of coffee remains behind. So that means it's much lower, and that's why decaf coffee is a good alternative if you're struggling to sleep at night, uh, because you really reduce the caffeine content. However, you need to bear in mind that you can't obviously then take multiple cups of coffee because it's not fully caffeine free. Now, the other question relates to flavor. So this is much more tricky to answer because a lot of people stipulate that they say that it tastes very different to them. It is known that caffeine contributes towards bitterness. So it could be that this is less bitter because we're obviously taking away something from it. In terms of the extraction process, you want to really take care that we're not removing the flavor molecules. So it really depends on how your extraction process is performed and it could also depend on the number of rounds of extraction that you're performing. The good thing, if we're looking at health benefits, and this I found reassuring to hear, actually coffee has been associated with health benefits. That is, if you drink it in moderation. And the good thing to note is if, that if you switch to decaf coffee, you will no longer have night jitters, but you will still experience the same health benefits as a normal cup of tea. Thanks for watching this video and do have a look at our playlist Science Off, where I explain a lot of other scientific concepts, such as for instance the Lotus Effect.